Hey everybody, welcome to Love Always Adventure, often where we live for love and adventure and all things schooly, of course. And in this video, we're talking about our mistakes and regrets in building out our schooly. So, here we go. Hey there friends, we're the Browns. Chad, Katie, Addison, Kenya, and Milo. We live for love and adventure. In November of 2017, we sold our house and most our possessions in pursuit of simplicity and freedom. Two months later, we bought a 2001 Bluebird school bus to make our home. After building out the bus for six months, we've been on the open road full time. Our family motto is love always, adventure often. We're stoked for you to join our journey and hope you enjoy watching our videos as much as we love making them. So hit subscribe and enjoy the adventure. All right, so I wanna do a really quick introduction first of why I'm talking about our regrets and our mistakes in building out our school bus or our schoolie. The reason being is because we follow a lot of schoolie channels and we love watching people build out their creativity, their journey, all of that sort of stuff. It's just so fun. But one thing that we notice is there's not a lot of people out there talking about, especially after their build is done, there's not a lot of people talking about either their mistakes or the things they regret in their build. And so we wanted to create a space where people could come to this honestly and look at our mistakes, look at our regrets, and, I'll, and also share theirs if they have any. And we can have a real honest conversation about what it's like to build out a school bus. Okay, so I wanted to start out with the bus itself. If we were to buy our bus again, there's a few things that we would do very differently. The first one is, is that we would look for a pusher. Right now we have a puller, which means the engine is, the, is in the front, um, about a foot and a half from where I drive. And in a pusher, the engine is in the back. And there's a couple reasons for this. We have found out since traveling that it gets very hot and loud in the driver's seat. Like legs on fire, earplugs in, and um, it's crazy loud and crazy hot. And so I think if the engine was in the back, we could reduce that obviously a ton. I don't think we'd experience a lot of the heat up here or a lot of the noise. So we would look for a different engine position on our bus. Second thing with the bus is we would definitely look for a team bus or an activity bus. People call them a lot of different things, but they're mostly used for sports activities when they're in commission by schools. And they're about six, inch t six inches taller, four to six inches taller. I'm not too worried about height. We don't have any height issues in our family. Um, but what they do have is the undercarriage storage. So below board storage ac accessible from the outside. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about storage a little bit later, but I would really love to have those outboard storage, underbody storage units um, that are accessible from the outside of the bus. They can be dirty. They can, you know, they're easily accessible. They can hold solar and electrical components and batteries and generators and all of that kind of stuff. I really wish we would have made sure that we had that outboard storage. We could add it. I get that. A lot of people add underbody storage uh, accessible from the side afterwards. It's just a lot of work and the, the units that we found are pretty expensive. So we would look for that already built into the bus. Couple of things to do with our water storage and our water system. One is I wish we just would have put more fresh water storage in the bus. Right now we have about 75 gallons, which is a good amount, especially when you compare it to regular RVs. It's about double what you'd find in a large RV, which is kind of wild to me. But uh, I'd love to have more like, 100 gallons uh, of fresh water, it would just allow us to be disconnected for longer. So along those same lines is our below board water system. If I were to do it differently, I would do a, an above board water system, meaning instead of the water containers being, the fresh water containers being mounted underneath the bus, I would bring them inside the bus, probably store them under the master bed. Uh, we have plenty of room in there. There's tons of storage there that we don't necessarily need. And that does a couple of things. One thing is it, it reduces a lot of risk of contamination in your freshwater tanks. 
uh, just being outside and under the bus, they're exposed to a lot of things being kicked up onto them while you're driving, animals, all of that kind of stuff. So it reduces contamination. The other thing is freezing. And, you know, we plan to travel with the weather. So in the winter, we'll be in the southern states, Texas and Florida and that kind of stuff. And so there's not a ton of risk for freezing, but even on a cold snap, it's possible that we could have, we could be worrying about freezing lines. And I just don't want to deal with that. I really wish we would have put an above board, meaning inside the cabin water system. I think that would have made me feel a lot more better about our water. Sitch. Okay, this next one, I told you we'd get back to it, was storage. Now, don't get me wrong, we put plenty of storage in, but that's where we stopped. So we dedicated these storage spaces, which are awesome. They're big storage spaces where we can keep a lot of stuff for our family, a lot of gear, a lot of equipment that we have to have, and I have to have my film equipment everywhere I go for work, all of that kind of stuff. And so we built large storage spaces. However, we neglected to organize those storage spaces well. Take under our bed, for example, we built at the height to where we could stack two totes high and three totes deep, meaning we have about six, like in one row, we can have six totes. Now, inevitably, there's always something in that back bottom tote that you want. And in order to get to that, you have to move five other tote containers to get to that one thing that's in the back corner, bottom corner of your storage. And uh, it would have just been so much better to think through and build out our storage organization, dividers, boxes, shelves, whatever you want to call it in the beginning. But yes, we can do this retroactively and we probably will end up doing that. It just would have been so much easier in the build to think through how we would interact with our storage and build it accordingly. Oh, counter space, counter space. We knew even building, even putting in our kitchen that we would want more counter space and we ignored the thought and we don't have near enough. So we're, we're exploring options and ways to put in more counter space. I just wish and regret, and I think it was a huge mistake to not include as much counter space as possible. We love to cook, we love to prep food, we love to eat inside the bus as a family. So right now we're prepping our food on the countertop and on the, t the table, which we knew we would do, but by the time you're ready to sit down and eat, now you have all of this stuff out on the table that you use to cook. So we would put a lot more counter space in, and we're just starting to throw around ideas of how we can include more counter space in the bus. All right, so next, doors separating the living spaces from the main living area to the bunk area to the bathroom to our master bedroom to the office. And if you haven't seen the layout of our bus, I encourage you to go watch our tour video. It'll explain this point a lot more. I'll link it in the in the description below so that you can check that out. I originally planned to put accordion doors between all those spaces. Those are the doors you see a lot in RVs that kind of fold out, accordion out. Um, and accordion back. The problem is, is I didn't do enough research in the beginning to make sure that I could find something that would work for the space, both the way that it looks and the way that it functions and it could be able to be trimmed, all of that kind of stuff. And we just have not been able to find what we want. So now we're looking at solid doors and they're gonna be have to be custom made because of the space that they have to go in. So we could have saved ourselves a lot of time, effort, heartache, all of that kind of stuff, and planned the depth of our walls around doors that didn't need to be specially made or ordered. So my next point is window tint, and I've mentioned this in a couple of our videos, and a couple of people have thanked me for this point, but we knew that we wanted to tint most of our windows with a really dark limo tint for a couple reasons, privacy and temperature. It really helps keep the bus cooler and we didn't have to use curtains as much. We could know that the tint was kind of giving us some privacy. So the problem was is that I started to build out the layout of the bus before I started tinting the windows or before I tinted the windows. And what happened was when I discovered this problem and we were running walls into the middle of windows and I realized I needed those tinted, it held us back for a few days because then we had to go order the tint, learn how to apply it, 
apply it, and then we could continue building the walls and, and the process that we had already started. So it actually pushed us back quite a bit, not having that tint. And on top of all of that, I ordered the wrong percentage of darkness in the tint. We wanted a really dark one, and I ordered like a medium one, so that put us out even more, so about another four days. So had I to do it over again, I would do all of the window tint that we wanted to do on the bus before we even started to build any walls or infrastructure. Next, all white paint. Now, I will say, this isn't necessarily a regret or a mistake. We definitely meant to go all white, and I still love it, and I would not change it at all. But here's the problem, is that the white paint gets dirty all the time. We're out adventuring, we're out having fun. I mean, I know if we come back really, really dirty to the bus, we had a good day. And so what that means though, is that all that dirt on those fingers and toes are gonna be transferred onto the walls. And so we've just made it a practice every single week, one day a week, all of us take a little bit of time and we wipe down the entire bus, just like a ship. You know, the, as they wipe down the entire deck of the ship, here I am pretending like I have any idea what it's like to be on a boat. I don't. I'm giving you that impression. I have no idea what it's like. Very last thing. All of the things up to this point have been something to do with the bus or the bus build. And this last one, the 10th one, has to do with my mindset. And one of my regrets and one of the mistakes that I made throughout the build was just wanting to get it done. Being worried about getting out on our adventure, being worried about being in a space that we were intruding somebody else's space. Katie's parents let us live at their house. They let us build out the bus on the side of their house. They were so kind and so good to us. Yet I still felt this angst that we needed to get out of there and give them their space back and get on with our adventure. And so most of my time building was really worried about things that were holding us back and expenses and all that kind of stuff. Instead of just taking time to breathe, and enjoy the process. Because I'll not, probably never do a bus build again, and so I wish I would have just taken the time to just slow down, enjoy the puzzle that it is to put it together, enjoy the challenge, enjoy the problem solving, enjoy all of those opportunities that we probably won't get very many times in our life, if ever again. So again, I wish I would have just taken the time to enjoy that process instead of wishing that we were already on the road. Okay, our schoolie friends, our adventure friends, our YouTube friends, that's my list of our regrets and mistakes on our bus build up to this point. Now, I might have to do a, a version two of this video as we get a little bit further along. We've been in our bus for two months. More things might come up, mistakes that we made, things that didn't last, things that we had to modify or change. And maybe I'll do another one of these videos. I hope this has been helpful. I hope it sparks a conversation below. My question to you is, if you are a schoolie owner or builder, and you've built out a schoolie or starting to build out a schoolie, what are some of the mistakes that you've run into? What are some of your regrets or things that you wish you would have done on your schoolie? Let's have a conversation below because it can be invaluable to people who are just starting this process or considering this process. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. I love the discussion, the messages. I love the ideas, all of the love that happens in the comments section below of our videos. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's keep the discussion going. Let's talk about the mistakes, the regrets, Regrets. Let's help some people out. And remember to love always, adventure often. Wow, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoy seeing our videos as much as we love making them. Don't miss a single adventure or bus moment. Make sure you hit subscribe and share with everyone you know. We'll see you next week. And remember to love always and adventure often.